Welcome to the Consciousness Anywhere and Everywhere podcast. I am Shannon O'Hara and I invite you to a completely new world of possibilities. Who are you creating for? Hello, everybody out there listening. How does it get better than this? I had a massive aha breakthrough yesterday and I'm doing today's podcast all by myself me and my big ideas. So I hope you enjoy. I um, I was reviewing my YouTube channel actually yesterday and just going through all of the videos, like the years and years of content and videos and reflecting on this podcast and how many, I think we're maybe like around 60 podcasts. Um, and all the content I've created, we, we were just recently going through um, the back end of my websites and fixing and updating uh, the tagging system, which those of you guys who do um, have any kind of CRM, customer management service, uh, or run anything that uses a, you know, an online CRM that manages customer contacts and stuff, you know what tagging is. Anyways, we were updating the tagging, which essentially like shows like what contacts have done what over the years and da, 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 da. And like we exported the tags from, I use Infusionsoft right now. And it was, we had over 6,000 tags, which if you guys aren't in the industry, that might mean nothing to you. But if you are in the industry, 6,000 tags in Infusionsoft is like mega, like way overload. So we were going through the tags and it was so incredible for me to just get this bird's eye view of the last, I think I've been using Infusionsoft for eight, nine years. And where the tagging started and how clueless I was then and how it was just instituted like a, like a kindergartner driving a, like a Lamborghini. And then over time, how it's gotten better and better. But then going to this next evolution of cleaning things up and just looking at how many products there's been and how many classes and like the years and years and years and years of creating with access consciousness and creating consciousness content. And it was interesting. I didn't have this sense of like, I wasn't proud of myself. It was this other feeling of like, <laughs> not that pumped. And I looked at that and I was like, and, and where I, what I thought that I was being aware of was like the actual thought that went through my head is like, this isn't enough or like, I'm not having a big enough impact. And by the way, if you're listening to this now and you have been somebody who has benefited from my work, from any of the content, podcasts, YouTube, classes, products, free stuff, paid stuff, anything, if you've ever done it with me, could you leave a comment somewhere? Could you like something of mine? Could you give me some feedback on this podcast? It really, really, really makes a difference to me and it helps me keep wanting to keep creating. So anyways, I was looking at that and I was like, oh, how do I like you know, how do I increase my sphere of influence? How do I have a bigger impact? How do more people find this stuff, you know? And so I'm all done in the dumps <laughs> about my many years of creation and sort of like in conclusion about what that is. And I, I, I was messaging my sister yesterday afternoon. I said, hey, can, can, can you help me with something? She's like, sure. And I told her what was going on. I was like, oh, I'm feeling like a little bit, little bit depressed about, you know, not having enough impact or not enough people having access to this stuff, et cetera, et cetera. And she's like, well, what about like if you didn't have any expectation of anybody getting it? And I was like, yeah, yeah, well, that's not really the issue, you know. And she kept like repeating the same thing like over and over to me. Like, well, what if you did, what if it wasn't about like them getting it? And I realized finally, after she asked me like the same thing, basically in a different way, like five times, I was like, oh, whoa. <laughs> and I realized that I had started off creating for me. Like I started off facilitating access, creating what I was creating, like for me, for the pure joy that it brought me. And I didn't have any expectation of anybody getting it or how they got it or if they were going to get it because I had absolutely no reference point for what I was doing. It was just like I was in uncharted territory. I was so young. I had no reference point for commerce or business. I didn't even think I was in business. I was just like trying to be alive and just following the energy and doing what was fun for me. And I knew that every time I facilitated access class, it was like fun for me. And it made my life feel better. And then I started creating 
little bit by little bit with the websites and like a little, like it's my first single product, which I can't even remember what it was. It was so long ago, but, and it was like, and then somewhere over the last, you know, I'd say like been really hard at it for like 19, 18 years, somewhere in that last 18 year span, I started creating for what I thought other people could handle. I have to say it this way because I don't want to be too offensive. I don't want to blow people out of the water. I have to only give them what they can receive. And yesterday I was, oh, newsflash, guys. I started vlogging. First time ever. So hopefully you guys are going to be seeing uh, my first ever vlog. <laughs> Which has, like I mentioned access in it like once at the very end, but it's not about a tool. It's not about a class, which is always what I've made videos for before, you know, tools, the tools of access consciousness or talk to the entities or a class promotion, um, or like a free bit of content for magic with money, et cetera. So there's, it's always been like tool or consciousness theme related, but I'm making a vlog for the first time ever. So I feel like I'm like, I'm like regressing 20 years. So this is 20 year old Shannon getting to create like what she wants day in my life my favorite things in my apartment you know traveling that's what that's going to be so anyways I was filming this little piece for the vlog and I made the camera angle in a way that you know I judged I was like this is not gonna this is too weird and I caught myself thinking that and I was like but I still want to do this so I did it anyways and then I had that conversation with my sister well sort of messaging with my sister and then I thought back to how I almost didn't do that camera angle I wanted to do because I thought people would think it's too weird. Yes, folks, I am even susceptible to other people's points of view. And that's not even really the issue here. The issue is I had stopped creating for what was fun for me. And I was creating for other people. And that creating for other people took the joy out of it for me. Not that creating for others is joyless. Like creating for others can be massively rewarding and inspiring, but I was only creating for others. And those of you guys out there that know me, that have to do with me, you know, professionally, socially, access consciousness wise, you might be surprised to hear that, that I was even, that I was creating for other people because I seem so confident, clear, <laughs> decisive, you know, a lot of the time. And I am, and I had given up this, what I'll call radical magic that I have access to this weird way of seeing the world. And then to take it a step farther, the expression of that for me. And I, many of you guys wouldn't know this, but I went to art school as my, you know, instead of, you know, that's what I did for college. I went to art school and I dropped out of art school to follow and pursue access consciousness. But it was interesting what I did with that. I did two years of art university and, when I left, I didn't take anything with me. I like completely renounced everything that I loved about art. And not like I don't love art anymore. It was just sort of like I saw no value in what I had been doing previously. I like I literally like threw away all my art, all my brushes, all my paint. Like I just completely jumped tracks and I and I wish I hadn't and whatever the past is the past. But coming forward to today, it's like, oh wow, I I really threw the baby out with the bathwater and I have an artistic vision. And one of the ways in which I perform self-therapy is yes, with access consciousness, but yes, with creation. And so I've been creating and like what I've been creating over the years is all the content I mentioned earlier, you know, my body of work, the classes, the videos, the podcasts, um, the websites, the changes in people's lives, you know, it's like, that's what I've really been focused on creating, which has been hugely successful and dynamic and amazing. And what's the weird way that, you know, you see the world and are you creating it? And so I don't totally know what it's going to be yet. I don't totally get like what or how I will express that yes energy that excitement that conduction that makes my whole universe like dazzle with enthusiasm because yes that occurs for me my whole universe can dazzle with enthusiasm like I don't know exactly what that's going to be yet but at least now I am accessing that creation for me too again so I thought that was sort of like 
a really dynamic thing to bring up because how many of you guys do the same, you know, where you sort of like have this very unique way of being you or expressing you or knowing what's possible for you. And then you like, don't choose it or you sort of push it aside for others. I think moms, I think a lot of moms <laughs> might be able to relate to this, you know, like you can't really have your life because you have to put a huge amount of energy into somebody else's life. And dads, I know you relate to this too. And I mean, this is just one little example. And that's not wrong to be putting energy into creating for somebody else. And have you given up creating for you too? Would you like a life of more ease, joy, abundance, and choice? Join Club Consciousness, my monthly consciousness membership to get in shape for that life. One group call per month, plus processes, clearing loops, access to the closed secret shop, specials for just my members. Get clear on your life, create your life, enjoy your life. Welcome to Club Consciousness. Visit clubconsciousness.com to find out more. So I wonder what our world would look like if we created for ourselves, but not at the exclusion of others. And for others, but not at the exclusion of us. That's been a big missing key for me. So it was even funny. I looked at this podcast and I was like, I was like, okay, well, what am I enthusiastic about? Because that's usually where these podcasts come from. It's actually something that I'm deeply interested in. I had, um, or something that I know is this sort of like access point and expression of magic in the universe. Uh, last episode released was the making of Elogar. And that's something that I, I mean, that story is like deep, has deep, deep, deep roots. And it was really awesome to be able to get together with Claudia and David and David to talk about that because they're like on the ground actualizing that vision. But that vision started a really long time ago in a land far away. And Elogar like, legitimately taught me about gifting and receiving and that's something that I actually made another vlog about so you guys are gonna have to keep your eyes out for that and that's getting edited um God, I think it, anyways I think that'll be my second one but it's so when I make these podcasts it's that it's this in, I, it's something I'm extremely interested in or I know is going to be this access point for magic in the universe and um I was looking at you know, I've had actually a lot of people contact me, people I don't know, saying like, would you be interested in having this guest on your podcast? And I, I, and at first I thought it was weird, but then I realized what was going on with my podcast is such a big reach and it's such a big exposure that people want to get involved with it. And I thought, wow, that is really an indication of I'm succeeding in some way with this. But I looked at that because I get these people contacting me saying, hey, would you be interested in having such and such guest on your podcast? And I realized like, my podcast is coming from my own personal experience and I have people who I have personal relationships with um, and know well as friends or family, which I had to kind of like figure out that that's what I was doing for a long time. Cause you have so many podcasts out there that are so unique in what they are. And I mean, you could even say that like, you know, my podcast is a personal podcast, except it isn't. It's just a very access centric podcast. And that is something that I didn't know if that was okay or not. It was like, should I have other kinds of people on here? And if I'm creating for me and if I'm creating for the energy, I want to be talking to people that like, you know, yes, know that magic is possible. Yes, are bringers of magic. And yes, people who can facilitate greater connection to consciousness in the universe. Um, my point being, I was looking at today's episode and was like, what do I want to do? Like, what am I enthusiastic about? I was like, oh, should I skip a week? Because now I can't, I can skip a, I can skip an episode if I want, you know? And I was like, should I skip it? And I was like, what would, and I actually asked this question. I said, you know, on the, with, on my staff thread for this podcast, I said, what would be fun for me? And like within three seconds, this topic of do you create for you or do you create for others came. So it's like, there's always these, there's so many strings of, energy and things that want to be created. There is a book by ooh, who's that author who wrote Eat, Pray, Love? Wow. I'm having a blonde moment. 
I also forgot how to spell queen this morning. So um, Elizabeth, there is a book by Elizabeth Gilbert called Big Magic. And in there, she talks about ideas and how ideas come. And if you don't catch them immediately, they'll go to somebody else. And when I heard her write about that, I totally could relate to it. And all of the ideas and inspirations that have come to me over the years and some I've caught and harnessed and like created with and some I didn't catch quick enough and then they left and I forgot about them. And so there's so much that wants to be created in the world and it's asking you. And if you don't take action on that creation, it'll go to somebody else. And (laughs) what is possible for all of us creating for what inspires us. Wherever you are listening to this, I hope you are connected to your life, not being distracted by the responsibilities of money, family, and connected to and honest with yourself. Take a moment right now and dare to question yourself to be true to you, not against others, but for you. You know, it was easy for me to distract myself and excuse that I wasn't having a big enough impact or I wasn't reaching enough people or I made it about other people. I made my lack of creative enthusiasm about other people. You know, it's like, how much do you blame your life on other people? You know, I can't because of my kids. I can't because of the money. I can't because of my husband. It's like, my mom won't let me, all that kind of stuff. Is that ever true? Or is that a distraction and an excuse from what is fun for you? And then the courage, the free will, the enthusiasm to choose that. Thank you, guys. Love you. Thank you for listening to this show. My target is to make consciousness easy to find and choose. So if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a five-star review on iTunes and share this with somebody who you know who might be looking for more consciousness in their life. You can visit me on shannon-ohara.com or talktotheentities.com. And to learn more about the amazing tools of Access Consciousness, you can visit accessconsciousness.com and be sure to subscribe to the podcast. Thank you.